So in this example, we want to find, find a transformation from the upper half Z plane to this half infinite strip in the W plane. Now you might remember that we've actually seen this sort of transformation, or at least we've seen it from here to here before. Um, so uh, we actually know it's going to be something like a hyperbolic function. Um, but just as an exercise in using the Swatch Christoffel transformation, we'll try and solve this problem. Okay, so uh, this is the first, our first example showing an open polygon. So by open, we mean we can't see one of the one of the uh, one of the vertices of the polygon is at infinity. Okay, so these are infinitely long sides. Um, so it seems natural that we call this W3 as infinity, and that corresponds to where uh, X3 goes to. So um, we can say for sure that, um, okay, if you like, X3 is infinity, and F of infinity is, is in the point of infinity. So that's our first piece of information. Um, now then we need to choose, well, the other corners are um, the here and here. Um, we need to choose uh, where to put x1 and x2, which gets mapped to um, w, we can call w1 and w2. So um, this is going to be w2, and we may as well call this one x, x2, and we'll make that 1, since 1 is a nice simple number, no reason to call it anything else. Um, we can see that x1, wherever it, wherever it is, when we go from x1 to x2, the region we want is on the, on the left. Similarly, when we go from w1 to w2, the region we want is on the left. So then we sort of have a choice. x1 could be 0 or x1 could be minus 1. Um, it, it really depends on, the choice really depends on the integral. Um, and it turns out it's probably easier, the integral we get is probably easier if we choose to make x1 uh, minus 1. Okay, so um, we have w equals w0 plus alpha times z0 to z. Now, now we're going to see the, um, the choice of integration. So we've got big Z minus minus one, so that's plus one. And then the angle here, so this is W1, when it goes from uh, this direction, goes around the corner at W1, the external angle needs to rotate anticlockwise pi by two. So P therefore is one half, and we've got minus P1, P1 is one half, so minus p1, that gives us minus a half here. And similarly, this one is going to give us again, as we rotate, we need to rotate anticlockwise pi by two again. So here we've, we've got z minus one to the minus half again, pz. So we may as well write down the other information we have. So we've got what f of infinity is. Um, we now know that f of minus 1 needs to be ia. And f of 1 gets mapped to 0. Um, now this, is a, this gives us a hint about how we're going to choose w0 and z0. Um, if we make z0 1, then if, when we put z equals 1, um, if this is 1 and this is 1, we get 0. And that means we can choose w0 to be 0. So this result here implies that we can make this 1 and this 0. So that just leaves us with integral from 1 to z, and then we can simplify this. This is uh, the square roots, 1 over the square roots of z minus 1 times z, z plus 1 times z minus 1, and that gives us 
the big Z over the square root of Z squared minus 1. So this is a standard integral. Um, it gives you inverse cosh. Um, so inverse cosh um, of big Z evaluated between little Z and 1 gives you alpha times inverse cosh of z, since inverse cosh of 1 is, is 0. Um, so we're almost there. Um, we need to find out what alpha is. So to, to get what alpha is, we use the remaining inf information we have, which is this. So um, we know that Ia is equal to alpha inverse cosh of i a um, to deal with that sorry inverse sorry, inverse cosh of uh, minus one uh, if you can't remember what inverse cosh of minus one is um, instead um, we can take uh, we can um, rearrange and get uh, cosh of putting this over here i a over alpha is equal to minus minus one um, now cosh of i a over alpha um, is the same as cos of a over alpha is equal to minus 1. So this implies that um, a over alpha is equal to inverse cos of minus 1 is pi. So that means we have alpha equals a over pi. And our final answer is uh, w equals a over pi inverse cosh of z is the transformation we want. Um, notice if we do the inverse transformation, we get z equals pi w over a, uh, z equals cosh pi w over a, which is uh, familiar from something we've done earlier.